What's up, Gloving Universe? Puppy here again with episode two. I'm actually not that tall. People keep telling me that, oh, you look a lot more taller in your videos, but I'm actually not that tall. I'm just a short Filipino kid from Hawaii. I'm 5'6". So before we talk about anything important, you guys want to come with me to a party? What? Are you ready to party? We're going to a party. Sure a house am. party. Party? Party? Yo, man, are you getting your face melted right now? Woo! Yeah, you're getting it melted? You, yeah, you... Uh, yeah, you... Get melted, fam. You know, I think I like going to house parties a little bit more than events or raves because it's just a lot more chill. You get to hang out with your homies and there's, like, not that random girl that's, like... Oh my god, can you give back for that light show? Oh! <laughs> I mean, that's fun too, though, sometimes. So, first off, big shout outs to my I am brother, I am Atlantis. He recently went to Japan and did this sick ass project videos where he got to see Gundams and like this cool mirror LED thingy place thingy. And man, I wish I got to see Gundams. Like, pretty soon that thing's gonna be blasting into space like, ooh, it's not even a Gundam. I'm just gonna put it here. Also, shout out to my boy, 30K. If you haven't seen the video already, he actually came to me like about a month ago talking to me like how he wanted to do this concept video. I'm just really happy to be able to make this thing come to life. I'll have both videos linked down below. Go check it out. Like, I love project videos. You know, I've actually had a lot of people ask me how I make these videos to so all you aspiring filmmakers and gloving content uh, producers. Uh, this one's for you. Hope this helps. I always have these random sparks of creativity whenever I hear a song that I like. Like it isn't like, oh, I'm going to go make a project video. Then I go searching for that song. That's not how I work. It's more so like, oh, there's a song playing and I'll just like start getting more engaged to it and I start to formulate the idea. So first things first, get a song that you like. Second thing that I do is that once I find the song, I will literally stare at my computer screen for a good two to three hours. Like I'm not joking. I literally stare at my computer for two to three hours listening to the song and I'm just imagining what this thing is going to look like. The third thing that I do is I make a outline or a timeline on exactly what shots I want or rather I'll write the timestamp for what shots I want like from zero seconds to 10 seconds like drone shot of the mountain and then like from 15 seconds to 20 seconds like me and Tweety looking at each other like super epically 30 seconds to 35 seconds is like the slow-mo shot of the I am flag and then you pretty much go through the whole song so you know exactly what shots you want. And this takes a bit of practice trying to envision exactly the whole project. Like, trust me, it takes a lot of practice. And then when I'm done outlining the shots, I make a shot list. Like, you see this? This is literally the shot list for Mez's video, the Face My Fears one. This is literally it. I got like a bunch of notes and you can kind of see that like, some of these are different colors. That's indicating the location that I shot. Like you can tell like on the top, it's got like, orange and the bottom is orange. So like what I would actually do is like, I'll shoot all the orange first and then I'll shoot like all the blue second. So, you know, you're shooting everything at one time rather than having to go back and forth. This saves you a lot of time. And then once I get the shot list, I'll print it out and then I'll go out and shoot. 
And while I'm shooting, I will always refer back to the shot list because while you're shooting, I, well, I typically get super confused on, wait, did we already get that shot? Like what shot am I on next? Because you know, you wanna be organized as Glovers were stuck on this time crunch. How, how, how many times has this happened to you where you're like, oh man, I wanna shoot in front of this really scenic area or like by this cool ass water fountain. And then like the time comes and your gloves finally illuminate. It's like six o'clock, right? And then like you're gloving and then like you don't get the shot that you want. And then like it's super dark now. Like, like I wasted my time. Lights on season five just started and we got a bunch of problems. There seems to be already some kind of quarrel with, you know, like I, I think I heard like some guy was like no longer in novice bracket or something. And then I heard like there was a ex Glover that shouldn't belong in this bracket because they're too good. And in my honest opinion, I feel that if you're like in the top 30 or 50 rankings, you belong in the pro bracket. You gotta let these new kids win. Like I get it, glory and money is great and all, but you know what's even more great? Seeing new people win. Besides all that though, I'm ready and I'm pumped and I'm ready to give everyone ones. And as I mentioned before, I'll be doing the style category for pro, intermediate one, and novice one. So as a present to all my woogoos, my woogies, my wooguians, I'm gonna give you guys the lights on Puppet Stout Cheat Sheet. Yup, that's right. I'm gonna be telling you guys exactly what I'm looking for when I'm judging, how I judge. Just first, let me pick up all this paper before my mom gets mad at me. Number one, boom, storytelling. I will not give you more than a two if you're committing to your sequence too early in the song. Like you guys should be saving your actual content and your real connections until like after the drop. And in order to get a four, there must be more than just a beginning, middle and end. Like if you have just a simple plain beginning, middle and end, that will give you a three. But what I'm looking for are visual narratives. I'm looking for insane progression. If you're doing straight tech sequences with like no difference in speed variety, then I'm sorry, I'm not gonna give you anything more than a two. Number two, bam, speed control. So if any time I see an execution error or any time where I feel like you don't look as confident while executing your moves, I will probably give you a one. Because like if you think about it, if you mess up and you're like, having all these hiccups in your movement that directly affects your speed. Like imagine runners who accidentally trip on a rock, but they don't necessarily fall. That would ruin their speed. It's the same exact thing. Also, okay, you got slow, you got kind of slow, then you got medium, you got fast, and you got damn bro, slow the f down. If you can perfectly execute these speeds at the most accurate time, you're on your way to a three. Also, don't forget pauses. Pauses are also considered a speed. And then we got, boom, musicality. Oh boy. Okay guys, listen, the most important thing that I'm looking for in musicality is if you're able to capture the spirit of the song. You know, like if the song is slow, I wanna see subtleties in your movement, right? Like I wanna see you going slow. I wanna see how you translate what slow can be. And if your song is grungy and distorted, I wanna see what your translation is of distortion in your glove light show, your glove lights, your light show. And like, if your song is super dirty and wicked, you better be using brown gloves after a rave. To me, it isn't about hitting all the beats, although I feel like hitting a lot of the beats is important. It's about translating each layer and nuance to the best of your ability. So accurately capturing the spirit of the song, hitting a lot of the major beats and nuances, combined with the understanding of storytelling and speed control, like that is a five guys. Anything missing from that, you will probably get a four below. And big note, there have been some instances where I'm like judging videos and their music is so soft and you could literally just hear just only the material of their gloves. Like that. that's it, like that sometime, like I've, I've had that before. You know what score you're gonna get? So please overlay your audio guys, it's not that hard. There are apps for that. Mr. Freckles asks, 
Would you change the ideal scorecard or host a comp with no scorecard? I just want to say that I've been competing in gloving competitions for about seven years. I have judged and been judged by numerous variety of scorecards before and I'm just gonna say that this rendition right now is probably the best rendition so far. Like I've seen scorecards where people try to quantify which concepts are harder to do than others. How do you quantify that a specific dial sequence is harder than a specific tutting sequence? For one, you'd have to pay attention to literally all the micro movements that this Glover is doing, which is like impossible to do like on the spot for the whole show. Like, oh, okay, we got a king tut to a platform to a digit dial sequence. Oh my God, into the gunshot. We have a platform sequence again into a Chrissy Classy Shaka move. And then you have to factor in genetics. Like, what if it was physically more difficult for Glover A to do a specific tutting sequence than Glover B just because of their genetics? Like, how do you quantify all this? Like, you see my pinky? I can't bend my right pinky because my tendon is connected with my ring here. The, like, the tendons are connected or whatever. And like, what if I were to like magically bend it one day? That would be really complex for me personally, right? Like, would that deserve a five in complexity? I'm gonna just say it, judging will always have its subjectivity. We all have different views, different backgrounds, different styles. There's probably never ever gonna be a perfect scorecard. If I were to make changes though, I'd probably put presence under style, use of space under presentation, and speed control under execution because the terminology just makes sense. Would I host a comp with no scorecard? Yes, I would. However, the judges would have to be very good at what they're doing. They'd have to know almost everything about gloving. And it probably wouldn't be a 32 man bracket. I'd have it down to like 16. So I had someone ask me from the last episode, how do you create your own style? First thing is you need a goal. You need to visualize in your head what your own perfection looks like. Like for me personally, I wanted to have a style where I was very explosive and very theatrical. So whenever I got inspired by something, let's say I watched something that was super explosive or super theatrical, like why do I like that kind of stuff? What about them being explosive or theatrical makes it good? I hope that makes sense. Like sometimes I'll bump into videos where I'm like, wow, that guy was really explosive. Like why was that explosive? What about it do I like? And then you could take that and manipulate it and then use it in your own gloving. Whenever you're inspired, don't just copy the movements, build on it, like add your own flair to it. For me personally, I've always wanted to use perspectives and angles that like nobody else really use. Everyone wants to be different. You physically have to go out there and see what everyone is doing so you know what not to do, if that makes sense. You have to pay attention to what concepts are out there and see what you like from them. Pick and choose a characteristic of a concept that you can take and manipulate on your own. Like, think about this, okay? What if there was a guy out there that loved the theatricalness of materia, but they wanna do tech like clumsy? Boom, voila, you got puzzle flails. All right, guys, and this episode's Glover Spotlight goes out to Disco Wolf. First off, dude, I love the Glover name. This show to me was just super freaking trippy. Like this guy's use of speed and pauses really allowed me to appreciate his moves, you know? And like his use of repetitions with dials had like this super hypnotic effect. And I'm not even sure if it's the camera, but like this is a good example of using a blinky set, especially with this type of style. It's like it's perfect actually. Love the concepts, love the presence. If you haven't already watched it, Go check them out. I'll have the video down below. And this concludes our episode, guys. I hope you liked it. Also, if you order from Amazing, use code Aloha Nation for that 10% off. And if you want me to potentially go over a specific topic, comment down below. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out and woogoo.